Good morning, everyone. It is New Year's Eve, Eve 30th of December 2020. And in just a couple of days time, we're going to be leaving this year of years behind and moving into 2021. I am very much looking forward to seeing the back of 2020. But I've got to say that 2020, even though it's been incredibly difficult on all sorts of levels, in all sorts of ways, I've learned some things which I wouldn't have learned this year. I've come out of 2020 a whole different person, happier, much stronger and much more in tune with who I am and also with what I want to be doing with my life. In this video is to share with you what I've learned in 2020, what changes are going to be coming to this channel and I am introducing my spiritual life coaching practice. Lesson number one, every problem has a solution. At the beginning of 2020, I was working to bring yoga classes to my local community. It was going to be specifically for mums to help with um, feelings of um, disconnect from body and things like that. And I was one week off my first class. I had people lined up, people had paid, the class was full, and then we went into lockdown. So I had to cancel the whole thing. That was actually a blessing in disguise because I realised quite quickly that by going down that path of becoming a local yoga teacher, it meant that I was always going to be restricted by the amount of people I could help and also the amount of money that I could. And I worked out that I couldn't do it full time without doing eight hours a day, every single day, 365 days a year of lessons from six o'clock in the morning until six o'clock at night with a short break in the middle. I would never have seen my daughter and I would have burnt out within a couple of months because I, I just I just can't do that. I can't I can't produce that many classes and I can't I can't give so much of myself. The solution, the obvious solution to that particular problem was to bring my offerings online. And I am so incredibly grateful for the internet. I can't even imagine what the what it would have been like if the internet didn't exist right now. And that sort of takes me on to um, lesson number two that I've learned this year. And that is that there is always a choice in what you do. I went into 2021 with this plan. Then when, when I thought about it, when lockdown made me pause and think about what I was doing, I chose to change the focus of my offerings. Still supporting mums in their mental, emotional, spiritual and uh, physical health but it's not in person, it's not in person and it's not yoga stroke exercise uh, focused because it's just not my thing, I love teaching yoga, I really really do but I feel like by limiting myself to a yoga class I am excluding all of the other things that can also help people my choice has been to honour myself and my my soul and my very essence. So other ways that I've chosen to live during the lockdown is I have chosen very carefully who I spend time with, what I focus my energy on and how I react to things. I'm going to talk about fear in a moment. Basically my whole life I've been living from fear and it was only when I was actually truly 100% afraid for my life, for society in general, when that fear actually had a very real cause. I realised in that point that what I was feeling before was pressure to be something that I thought other people wanted me to be. It's things like with work. I haven't worked since I started my maternity back in 2018 and I worked my years of maternity and then because I relocated I had left my job but I've had a few people say to me when are you going back to work and the expectation is that I'm going to go back and work for somebody else now that's not the case before Covid happened I was looking for jobs because I thought that that's what I should do but I've decided and I always knew, I haven't decided, I remembered that 
working for somebody else doesn't work for me because I am the world's worst employee because I will do what needs to be done whether whether my boss wants me to or not. When I left my job in Australia, my boss said to me, she always gets things done even when I tell her not to. And he said, because it's the right thing to do. And that actually takes me on to my next point, which is the hard thing, the right thing, are sometimes the same thing. Big life changes. Moving house, relocating away from all of my friends, from Cornwall, which is seven hours away from where I live. Things like letting go of things. Um, it's easy to hold on to resentment and hold on to dislike of somebody just because it feels comfortable and it feels familiar. And it takes work to let go. It takes work to forgive. But during lockdown, during 2020 and all the stuff that's happened, I realised that by holding on to feeling annoyed with somebody or angry with somebody, I was doing two things. I was focusing my energy away from me and my daughter and what we need and onto somebody else for no reason because they didn't know. They didn't even care if I liked them or not, right? So I was wasting my energy. So I've, I've worked very hard on letting go of the things that used to annoy me. My reaction to stuff is a lot calmer now. Um, I went through a terrible, terrible phase where I would just, I was so angry. I was in pain, mo emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally, I was in so much pain. If something went wrong, I would lash out and I would, I would want to hurt people and I would hold on to that feeling of they've wronged me. Now, it's just, people do stuff. You know, stuff happens. That actually does move me on. Lesson number four has been the intentional direction of energy. It's been said where attention goes, energy flows. So where you put your attention is where your energy goes to. By giving energy to people that I didn't like or situations I didn't like or emotions I didn't like, focusing my mind on those things, it meant that I wasn't able to see the good. And this isn't about positive thinking. It's not about being unrealistically happy all the time. What it's about is consciously and mindfully choosing where you spend your precious precious energy and where you spend your precious time your precious love your precious money your everything everything that you have where are you spending it and is that a good place to be spending it my next video after this is going to be um a vision boarding and intention setting for 2021 this one is a review of 2020 and then the lessons I'll be taking forward into 2021. Um, and I'm going to talk about those in the next video. The fifth lesson that I've learnt in 2020 is that you leaving the house is not required to connect. I've always had this thing in my head where I prefer to be in person. Um, I don't like phones, I don't like video calls, I don't like I like to see people face to face, and that's still the case. I do like to see people face to face, but you can have a real connection, a strong connection with somebody over a video screen, through a screen like this. And it was actually my daughter who's taught me this because she's been having weekly um, Skype calls with her father. He is remote from us and every single week they have about 20 to 30 minutes talking to each other over video call lane. They've got to know each other because she's only two and, a half and she hasn't seen him for over a year in person because he hasn't been able to travel. And without that contact, that remote contact that we've been able to facilitate over video calling, she she wouldn't know him from like the chap on the street. As it is, he comes on the screen, she goes, oh, hi, daddy. That, she taught me that. She taught me that there are tools at our disposal. None of us need to feel isolated. No matter what the day, the time, the year, the circumstances, you never need to feel isolated. I mean. If you truly feel like you've got nobody to talk to, drop a comment below and I'll get back to you. Feel like you're having a conversation with a person. I'm here, okay? Connection with others is just one of the three main connection types, which I think are the most important. In fact, I think, I can't think of any more. These are the only three connection types that I can think of. So those being connection with others, connection with self and connection with nature. By being unable to leave the house, with video calls we can contact other people and connect with others. 
with introspection, reflection, meditation, we can then connect with ourselves. So we can turn inwards and examine our own self. And then the third way is connection with nature and the greater you connection with the great consciousness of God, whatever. One way you can do that is at home through self and solo meditation, guided meditations and things like that. But that does take me on to the sixth thing that I've learned during 2020 and that is getting out of the house is essential for your health and your happiness. It connects you with nature. Even if you're walking around a big city, you're still getting fresh air. You're still out of those four walls. You see other human beings in the flesh. And I know that um, some people who've lived in studio flats on their own, they've been working from home. They don't leave the house. You can go days and days and days without seeing anybody. And that is not healthy. That is not good for you. I'm 100% introvert. And even I got to the point where I had to leave the house. And it was those days where I was grumpy with Eleanor, she was grumpy with me. Um, I didn't want to talk to anybody, I just wanted to sit on the sofa and drink wine and eat chocolate, but can't do that because I've got a two-year-old and I felt all frustrated and scared and resentful. I would put on our shoes and I would walk down the street. And before I got three doors down, I felt so much better just taking action and getting out. So if you're lucky enough to live somewhere where you are able to walk out of your front door and um, go to some fields or some woods or some meadows or the beach or anywhere like that, then take advantage of that. If you've got a back garden, go in your back garden as often as you can, even in winter. I mean, it's absolutely chucking it down today, but I was out there earlier. So I sit in the shed door, bundled up in a big blanket and stuff, and I just watch the rain and it reconnects me. I can hear the birds singing and I can see the squirrels playing and I can see the trees and hear the trees and the flowers and it just breathing in that air, which is not indoor air, but having light, no matter how dark it is, it's still boosting your happy hormones. It's still giving you a good dose of vitamin D and it's still helping you to clear your mind and to ground yourself back into yourself. And by doing those things, it gives you a little bit of exercise and it does improve your mental health and your spiritual health as well. This is lesson number seven, living in fear is not living. When lockdown happened, I was terrified. I was th I thought that I was going to die and leave Eleanor all alone, that my, my, that my loved ones were going to suffer. I was afraid that um, we'd go into a recession, I'd lose my home. I didn't, I don't have a job to worry about, so I wasn't worried about money for the first time ever, but I was worried about the pressure that it was putting on us all and the relationships that were breaking down around me. I realized that I needed help. I needed help to um, process everything that had happened. I've, I've lived in fear for a very long time. I have looked over my shoulder and I have been afraid for a long time of various things. And I'm not gonna get into them now and I'm, I might never get into them, but suffice to say that I have cause for that. I was afraid that somebody was going to hurt me and my daughter. But that's not a way to live. Looking over your shoulder, moving house frequently. None of these things are conducive to a happy life. Trust me on this, they're really, really not. What is conducive to a happy life is finding what is joyful in the moment. So I was absolutely chucking it down out there. This morning, it was so, so icy. Ellen, bless her, she fell over on the ice. It's the first time she's ever seen it. She was like, oh, what's happening? So, um, but now it's raining and I want it to snow. I really want it to snow and that would make me so happy. However, the rain right now, I can hear up my window. I've got my candle, I've got my Christmas tree. I've got my cup of coffee, obviously. I mean, if, if any of you've been here before, you'll know, you'll, you'll recognize this mug. This is my favorite mug of coffee. But the joy in this moment is she's at nursery so I can talk to you guys. The other thing that I love to do when I feel frightened is play a little game, which I call, what's the worst that can happen? Worst thing that can happen, it has pretty much happened. There is a worldwide pandemic which has killed, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands and millions of people. Millions more are sick. Millions more are incapacitated. So what's the worst that could happen in this pandemic? The worst thing I can think of that would happen is that it incapacitates me or kills me. And I don't think that for me, I'm not afraid of dying. I'm not ready to go, um, but I'm not afraid when my time comes. What I'm afraid of is that my daughter would be left without a mother. 
and I don't want her to grow up without a mum. And more than that, I want to be there for her. I want to see her grow up. I want to see her as an adult. I don't want to leave her alone. I don't want her to have to bear the grief of losing her mum. So that, to me, that's the worst that could happen. So what is the worst thing that could happen if I die? She goes into care, she'll be cared for. She will be cared for. If she goes into care, what's the worst that can happen? She loses contact with the family. That's not going to happen at all because she would live with um, my with my brother or she would live with my best friend. She wouldn't be taken away from this area, not if they had anything to do with it. In, in some ways, the worst that could happen is she would go and live with her father because she would then not see this side of the family. But the truth of the matter is she doesn't see his side of the family anyway because they're Romanian and they live in Romania so okay she wouldn't have seen them this year anyway because of lockdown in the same way that she hasn't seen her dad so what's the worst that can happen if she goes into care the, the worst that could happen is she finds a foster family she gets adopted but that's not going to happen so that avenue is closed so what's the other worst that can happen she um stays with her dad which is not the worst that could happen because Despite our differences and all the problems we've had, he cares for her so deeply and he loves her so, so much that grow up um, knowing that she was loved. What's the worst that can happen? Nothing. I die. End of. That's pretty bad for me and other people grieving. The worst thing that could happen is that people miss me and they leave. I leave a, a hole in their life. But the worst thing that could happen to Eleanor is she loses her mum. She will never be alone. She will never be unloved. She will never be homeless. She will never be starving. She will never be abused. She will never be hurt. She will never be mistreated because that's not going to happen because people around me love me and they love her so much that that won't happen. So what's the worst that can happen? Nothing. Nothing is the worst that could happen. When you play the what's the worst that could happen game, what if you, what if, what if, and when you dig right down into it, there is always something that can happen to stop the worst thing that you can think of from happening. By doing these things, by finding the joy in the moment, by playing the what's the worst that can happen game, I have come to the conclusion, and it is a choice, as I said earlier, you can choose how you feel as well as what you do and who you see and all the rest of it. You can choose how you feel. I choose to live each day with faith that it is going to be okay. And if it's not gonna be okay, then whatever comes next is okay. I've had some pretty traumatic stuff happening and it's always led me on to something else. So I guess bonus lesson 7.A, I suppose, is that there is no accidents. And whilst I don't necessarily believe in a predetermined destiny or that our life is in God's hands or you know someone out there has a plan for us, what I do believe is that what happens to us leads us on to the next the next thing and that thing is generally in the end it's better than the thing before because those lessons that we learn in those traumatic moments are the things that drive us forward into something better and into a happier situation into um more learning and you know all the good stuff lesson number eight or thing number eight that i've learned in 2020 is that aligning my actions with my essence is the key to my happiness and the word for this is integrity my essence isn't one of push 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 i'm not a mas masculine energy driven person i am a feminine driven person where my true essence is one which offers and gives and receives with gratitude and grace it's not one that hustles and pushes and markets and all that stuff i'm it's, it's not me it doesn't align with with who i am realizing this has been absolutely life-changing for me i used to work as a quality manager in the food industry and my day would consist of two main things the first one would be hearing and solving people's customer complaints probably about 40 percent of my day would be dealing with problems which don't necessarily have the solution that the person with the problem wants I would have people phoning up and shouting at me and it made me grow a really thick skin and it made me quite hard and that was my masculine energy coming forward and basically protecting me from the mental aspect of being complained to most of my 
working day. The other part of that job, which was incredibly um, masculine based, was that I had to negotiate constantly between the quality standards, what was feasible in the factory, money, what um, what the company wanted for the customers to see, blah, blah, blah. So I was always negotiating all these moving parts all the time. And I was always in this middle of this big conflict. And it was so far out of who I really am. I'm, I'm a mother, you know, I'm a nurturer and a mentor and I'm somebody who brings out the best in people by being super kind and gentle to them with a little bit of tough love thrown in. It was when I, was diagnosed with SIN3, which is the precursor to cervical cancer, in 2015, that I actually realised that my job was literally destroying my body. The stress that I was under, the cortisol in my bloodstream, I couldn't sleep, I was losing my hair, I was getting old, I was tired, my body hurt, like everything hurt. I made some big decisions to ultimately live in a way in the, which is in alignment with my um, my values, my essence, my core, my soul. And it's taken a long time, but that's what I've done. And by learning all of these previous 8.5 lessons, I have learnt the most, the most important lesson of my entire, entire life. And I've learnt this in 2020 from the trauma of all of the stuff that's happened in my life has all come to a head and the reason I've been able to do this is because I got help. I had um, CBT therapy for 14 weeks and I am also taking sertraline which is a type of antidepressant which helps with um, anxiety symptoms because the problem wasn't really that I was that I, I have depression the problem was that I was anxious and that anxi anxiety about what people thought of me and those things were preventing me from living 2020 for me was the year that i came alive and i think if you watch my first video and you watch this one even though they're only about 10 weeks apart you will see a huge difference in me lesson number nine is this reclaiming personal sovereignty leads to true freedom freedom to love freedom to do freedom to create and freedom to connect now i'll explain this okay Personal sovereignty is also known as free will, but as far as I'm concerned, it goes a whole lot deeper than just doing whatever you want. Personal sovereignty is taking responsibility for who you are, what you do, how you feel, um, how you live your life, how you respond to circumstances, situations and events. And it's also living in 100% alignment with your values and who you are on your own terms without anybody else telling you what you should and shouldn't do. If you're not understanding or you don't see how this can work for you, then stick with this channel because I'm going to be teaching how to reclaim your personal sovereignty and using the tools and the techniques that I've used over the last, at least the last 15 years to heal wounds from a long time ago to be able to be the person that I am and to do the work that I am about to embark on. By becoming personally sovereign by having the free will to do what I am placed here to do to do it without needing permission from anybody else for not worrying if somebody doesn't like it because people are gonna not like it anyway right I've never felt so much love I feel love for myself for myself I feel love from others for me I feel love to others I feel love from the universe itself I finally have an open heart which means that some of the limiting beliefs that I had have, have gone. They've just gone. So I'm free. I'm free to love now. I'm free to do what I want to do with integrity. And I am free to create the things that I need to create to get out, to help people who are in the same situation that I was in, where, where they can't escape from the shoulds and the ought tos and all of that stuff where this channel is going there is still going to be vlogmas there's still going to be what i wear in a day and um fun silly stuff like that and so yeah that nicely leads me on to lesson number 10 which is making youtube channel chat the making youtube videos is so much 
fun. I love this. I absolutely love it. I, you're watching this and you're judging me for wearing my glasses, for wearing a grey top, for wearing blah, for doing this, for saying that, for saying um too much. Then, quite frankly, it's none of my business. And I would invite anybody who has an issue with watching somebody to look at why. I mean, I've, I've gone through a phase at the beginning of the year of looking at people on YouTube and Instagram and going, oh my God, who the hell does she think she is? And now I've realised that who the hell she thinks she is, is herself or himself. And I'm applauding that. So if you look at somebody and go, who the hell do you think you are? Dig into that feeling and why it triggers you. Because the more you know about why things trigger you and the feelings that you have, and the emotions that you have, the more close you become to becoming personally sovereign. And I'll talk about that in a, in a future video. It changes to the channel, there's going to be more law of attraction, there's going to be coaching, there's going to be yoga, meditations, teaching, videos. My first offering is going to be coming in the middle of January and it is going to be a free five day video series called It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, and I hope I don't get like clobbered with trademark stuff, but it is going to be um, a five day series on how to connect with yourself, embody the wonder that you have around you to open your eyes to the beauty and the wonder and the good in situations that you encounter. 2020 for me has just been such a transformative year and I couldn't have done it on my own. So I'm, I want to change this channel into helping you as well. If you like this video, if you want more, if you want to come on the journey to personal sovereignty with me and come along as I teach and guide and, and then please consider subscribing down below here and hit the like button, leave a message if you um if you need help, let me know. If you if you don't like it, give me a thumbs up and tell me why. You know, I I I'm here for for you guys. So if you um if you want something, let me know. If you like something, tell me. If you don't like something, tell me. And yeah, my next video coming um later on this week, because I've decided to do two a week where I can. I am going to be doing a vision board for 2020, goal setting, intentions, word of the year, affirmations, all the good stuff to set us up for 2021 now that 2020 is behind us and we can all move forward with whatever our lives look like next. I love you all so very much. Love is a beautiful thing. It is an open and gorgeous thing. Everyone deserves it. And if you feel unloved, know that I love you and I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Stay safe. See you soon.